Ladies and gentlemen, I got some bad news for you guys. You see, when I was doing the research for this video, gathering the clips, rereading the story, rewatching the story, I slowly start to realize just how epic of a character Kakashi is. I start to realize that what I was seeing was wrong. And the fact of the matter is that Kakashi is probably the best character in Naruto. Hands down, no doubt about it. So, I want to apologize for all the time I spent hyping up this Kakashi sucks video. And I hope that you guys can forgive me. I am human, I make mistakes. So, I just want to clarify that. And I will see you guys later. Have a nice one. Come on, Lair. Come on, Lair. I know y'all didn't leave that shit. I know y'all didn't leave that shit. Come on out. Kakashi sucks. Look at it. Let's hop to this shit. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today doing a video that was a long, long, long time coming. And for all the folks who kept on persisting, like, King, where's the video? 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 Here's the video. So I don't have to see that shit anymore in the comments section. There's no more, where's the Kakashi Sucks video? Here is the Kakashi Sucks video. This video... I'm going to first talk about the positives. I'm going to talk about what people may or may not like about Kakashi. What makes him such a likable character. And then after that, we're going to go on this downhill spiel. This downhill screed, if you would, of Kakashi the character. Because this video is to simply tell folks why, in my mind, Kakashi is so far from good. It's not even funny. So now, let me talk about why folks like Kakashi. The things that make him so popular amongst the Naruto fan base. The first thing is that he's cool, quote unquote. He has the whole mask thing going on, the whole mystery veil thing. He reads the perv books, like the Make Out Paradise, and so on and so forth, which in essence ties to him being a funny character. He is someone who is a former Anbu. He has Sharingan, which is a very cool ability within the verse of Naruto. His style of fighting in of itself is pretty cool. And these are some of the factors that make him a cool character. The next thing probably is that he's a tragic hero. He has had a lot of loss in his life. And folks can relate to that loss. And when you can relate to a character, your connection with that character comes a lot stronger. And you get this full on when it comes to his backstory involving Obito. And then later on when it involves Rin. And seeing how over the course of his career as a ninja, he's lost so many loved ones, so many friends. And yet, he has attained new friends, new comrades, more important things, er, later on in his life, via his team. And later on, as we see in the upcoming film, his position as the Six Hokage. So, it is, in that sense, the tragic hero part of his character that folks find appealing. Another thing would be his role in the story... Where in the story, Kakashi is more so a support character. A prima support character who's always there to support Naruto, Jiraiya, and so on and so forth. When you need him, he's in the shadows. Almost like Piccolo in a sense. Where if you need help, he'll come out of nowhere and he'll assist you. And people find that part very entertaining about Kakashi. The fact that he's going to come out of nowhere and help you. Or he'll give you some intel. He's always a key supporter for the main players. That's the way Kakashi rolls. Either that or he himself is a main player. So that's another aspect of Kakashi that people find cool. Then you have his ideals. 
and his ideals, like, for example, you know, those who betray ninja rules are trash, but those who betray their comrades are worse than trash. Stuff like that. So, in essence, that goes into, like, the last part, which are these, these John Cena-like quotes, where he'll just say something really cool, and folks will find that inspirational, folks will find that just, in general, badass. And these are some of the aspects that make him a likable, a cool character in many of the Naruto fans' minds. Now, for me, obviously, a lot of these things don't apply, because being cool is just one's perception of the character, and him being a tragic hero, more or less, is something that can be both a good thing and a bad thing, depending on what your tastes are when it comes to manga and anime. His role in the story is actually pretty cool, and is actually fairly appealing in of itself, but then it does contradict what is the hype of Kakashi, which I'll get to real soon. And his ideals are fairly one-sided, and I'll get to that soon as well. So now that we've gotten the good stuff out of the way, I'm going to first start off with my own personal grievances against Kakashi. Number one being the fact that Kakashi has substantial hype as a character. And mainly that's from a combat standpoint. Because you have a character like Kakashi who is hyped up to be Hokage level. Who, and this ties into the next thing, who has known 1,000 Jutsu. So let me go to that real quick. 1,000 Jutsu. Kakashi, where the fuck are your 1,000 Jutsu? You only have like fucking 17. Maybe. On a good day, sir. But yeah, you know 1,000 Jutsu. You are the copy ninja Kakashi. I have yet to see these 1,000 Jutsu. And that is something I cannot stand. It makes me mad. Kakashi should have a Jutsu for every circumstance, for every occasion. And yet he does not. Kakashi should know a whole host of skills, aside from manipulating the Raikiri in various forms, such as making lightning clones, or lightning dogs, or lightning wire strings, whatever. But instead, he does not showcase these set skills that he supposedly has. And that is part of the so-called hype of Kakashi. Not only that, but his hand-to-hand -hand skills being as good as Mike Guy's, or I think Rock Lee's at least. Where the fuck is that? His hand-to-hand -hand skills are good, but... I wouldn't even come, I wouldn't even dare compare him to someone like Mike's guy. No way in hell, man. No fucking way. My guy is insane hand to hand. And then how he's the smartest Shikamaru. E even then, I wouldn't go that far. Because in some cases, Kakashi does show that he is not up to snuff when it comes to analyzing a certain situation. In a lot of cases, he is. In some cases, he's not. It's this hype of Kakashi where you expect a lot from the character. And later on in the series, especially so, he does not meet expectations at all. And because I do want to keep this video to a certain length, I'm going to just hop on like the last of my grievances, which is the fact that at the end of the day, Kakashi does seem to be a character that winds up becoming another Naruto spin-off. In the series of Naruto, there are so many characters who wind up becoming just like another version of Naruto. With the super idealism. And seemingly throwing away individual aspects to always put first the concepts of camaraderie and friendship. And that does bug me a lot. Because you can understand why Naruto feels this way to a certain degree because Naruto, he's young. He is naive of the world around him. But yet you have Kakashi, who is a much older individual, and you expect a lot more from Naruto's sensei, if you would. And the fact that Naruto's sensei winds up swaying more along the lines of Naruto towards the later end of the series, and how... What defines, if you would, realism, what is individualism, seems to be thrown away in a lot of cases for the sake of friendship and camaraderie. For example, when 
Kakashi talks to Sasuke before Sasuke leaves the village. Kakashi tells him that, yeah, like we've suffered a lot of losses, but we have very good friends. Therefore, you shouldn't be so focused on revenge, because revenge makes you hate. And even though what he's saying isn't necessarily wrong, the problem here is that it's, again, very one-sided. And I wouldn't expect someone who is so experienced as Kakashi to wind up turning into another Naruto spin-off. That, to me, I find very frustrating. Again, it surprised me because Kakashi, who's had so much experience in the field of being a shinobi, has a lot of one-sided arguments or has a lot of or his beliefs are very narrow-minded he doesn't necessarily see the bigger picture so these are my own personal grievances against kakashi now let me go over to the nitty-gritty let me go over to the stuff that is actually sound solid when it comes to the reason why kakashi is so far from good Kakashi's track record. Now, this is important. Why? Because it ties into Kakashi's so-called hype. Again, a character who is supposed to be Kage level, who is, you know, the son of the White Fang, the copy ninja, and then so on and so forth. But when you look at his track record, oh, 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 the hype that he has as a ninja, as, as a shinobi, former Andu, and so on and so forth, does not meet the expectations of track record. So, let's start here. Kakashi has only been two characters in the entirety of Naruto. Two! He's only been two characters in the entirety of the Naruto series. Zabuza and Obito. And Obito, maybe. You see, Obito bailed in the midst of that fight. He admits that he lost the battle but won the war. And he did attain the power of the Jubi. However, he also did leave Kakashi in a pickle where which Kakashi had very little chakra. And if he did not amass enough chakra, would have stayed in that dimension for a very long time. If not forever. So the thing here is that even though Kakashi did technically win the fight, he technically did not win the fight. Furthermore, when it comes to Zabuza, who he faced off against like three freaking times, the first time Zabuza won, had him in the water prison jutsu, couldn't move. Nigga was done. If not for the actions of Sasuke and Naruto, Kakashi would have died. And then we go over to when he is saved by Naruto and Sasuke, their actions obviously, what happens? Well, Kakashi does the iconic Ichi Ichi Ni Tori Tori Sun 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 da 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 the, the epic ass Sharingan copying winds up outclassing Zabuza in his own skills and he wins that initial fight and Haku comes and saves Zabuza. Second time round, Kakashi again beats Zabuza. And then third time, when he's back as an Otensei, he beats him again. So the only two fucking characters that Kakashi has ever been in the entirety of Naruto are freaking Zawuza Momochi, like three times over, which honestly you should exclude two of them, and then Obito, which is a semi-win. But when it comes to his losses, oh, mm, not only does he have more losses than wins, but the magnitude of his losses are far greater than the magnitude of his wins. Case in point, Itachi Uchiha. Oh, this dude gave him the Sukiyomi treatment. This dude was night night. He was gone for a period of months. Oh, we're talking about being stabbed for 72 hours straight in my Geku Sharingan style. And Itachi puts him in his fucking place. Like, you don't know nothing. You don't know shit, boy. You think that your base Sharingan can handle my Mon Geku Sharingan? Fuck out of me. And he stabbed this motherfucker for 72 hours straight. Like, what up now, dog? Feel my blade in your abdomen. Take it like a good girl. Yeah. That's what I thought you said. This motherfucker, take it like a good girl. Stop crying. Why are you hurting right now? I'm going to go real slow. Nice and easy. Yeah. Sing. Yeah. Sing. 
yes! And this dude, Kakashi, couldn't handle it. The pain was too great. Probably like a little bitch. Bleeding. Anal penetration. That's what this dude, Itachi, did to Kakashi. Gave him the real slow treatment. Bleeding. Like, what up now, dog? Like, <laughs> you ain't walking, right? Yeah, you ain't walking, man. My guy had to come and save you. Fuck is that shit? Come on out. Then, we got Kakazu. Now, most folks don't realize this. But Kakashi was about to die on two occasions against Kakazu of the Immortal Duo. If not for A, Shikamaru's actions, and if not for B, Naruto and Yamamoto's actions, Kakashi would have been wastelanded. The first incident is the fact that Kakashi had his heart invaded, invaded by Kakazu's weird tentacle wires. And if not for a second later, on Shikamaru's part, it would have been ripped the fuck out. Gone. And the second is the fact that Kakazu had Kakashi pinned down via tentacles, couldn't move, and was going to incinerate him with a combination of fire and wind jutsu. And all Kakashi saw was a flash. And if not for Naruto, if not for Yamamoto, he would have been eviscerated. He would have been gone. Ashes. You wouldn't need to be cremated. It would already be done. Ha! <laughs> Fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? Oh no! <laughs> Kakashi! Shitty! Shitty! And then finally! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, one of the most, if not the greatest loss Kakashi had suffered was at the hands of Nagato, aka Pain. My pain is greater than yours, nigga. And he takes that screwdriver, thing, and it's not just the simple fact that Kakashi lost. It's the fact that Kakashi died. This dude died. Because of direct actions of pain, he died. So it's not just the fact that Kakashi saved Choji and the fact that the Asha Path was still active. It's the fact of the matter that Kakashi had wasted so much chakra. And keep in mind, it's going to be a very important key later. When Kakashi fights against pain and he uses his lightning dog and then he uses the lightning clone to evade pain. He clearly states that he's running low on chakra after using his lightning dog and his lightning clone. And Pain was wastelanding everybody. Now, I don't know about you, but when you get KIA'd in combat, it that looks like a loss to me. And then obviously folks are going to bring up the whole Choji thing and how Choji had run away. Kakashi saved his life and so on and so forth. But the fact of the matter doesn't change that... Because of direct actions of Nagato, Pain, Kakashi died. Furthermore, if you want to get real specific, the Astro Path was still there and still active. So if Kakashi didn't have to deal with Choji running away, he had to deal with the Astro Path. And then he would have wasted even more chakra and would have died anyway. So the fact of the matter is that Pain did kill Kakashi Hatake. These are obviously the most prominent battles that take place within the series of Naruto involving Kakashi. I mean, I could bring up Sasuke and Kakashi and their fight in the Hokage Summit, but no one, but no one won that fight. There was no victor. Furthermore, if you want to bring up the other events in the Fourth Great Ninja War, there's after Obito, there's only one person left, fucking Madara. And no one beats Madara. Literally, Madara was unbeaten, undefeated, in the arena. So Kakashi got manhandled, but then again, everyone got manhandled by Madara. So, fact of the matter here is that when it comes to Kakashi and the hype of being a Hokage candidate, and yet you look at his track record, his track record doesn't live up to the hype. His track record seemingly makes him more so of a loser than a winner. And that's very obvious. The next thing I want to talk about is how Kakashi is, at best, at best, a subpar sensei. Now, let me go to the specific things first. First of all, his teachings. When it comes to his teachings, first of all, he does teach, like every shinobi, like every other Joni shinobi that had students, he does teach teamwork, though ironically, his team, about the entirety of Naruto, is the most dysfunctional team among the Rookie Nine. So, obviously, he does preach his teamwork, but teamwork 
clearly is not a defining trait of Team 7. Though Kishimoto does play out these moments of teamwork, of camaraderie, at the end of the day, when you compare Team 7 to Team 8, to I think it's Team 6 or Team 9, whatever team Hinata and Kiba and Shino are on, whenever, when, it, when, when it comes to these rookie 9 teams, these teams are far more of a cohesive unit, even if she could show for Christ's sakes. They are far more of a cohesive unit than Team 7, the team that Kakashi Hatake led. So obviously, even though he does preach that message, when it comes to carrying said message out, not a good job. Then he has these ideals and concepts that, again, are very one-sided. For example, like I said before, once again, you have those who betray ninja rules are trash, but those who betray their comrades are worse than trash. And from this idea, from this notion, we get the concept of comrades are more important than the mission. The problem here is the fact that when it comes to this argument, it's extremely one-sided because the mission could be to save the lives of thousands of people. So if you have four or five comrades and your mission is to, let's say, stop this particular person from wiping out a village, then this person has to be stopped despite the fact that you may lose three of your comrades. But then again, the modern day Kakashi would probably say, I'm going to not only stop this guy from destroying the village, but also I'm going to save you guys as well. That's the modern Kakashi. And you would think, as a sensei, as someone who has experienced a lot of missions, who was a former Anbu, who is now a Jonin, in regard to be Hokage level, you would think that Kakashi would understand that when it comes to missions, depending on the magnitude of said mission, it is far more important than the lives of your comrades. And again, this is a concept that he seemed to understand full well at the beginning of the series Naruto. Then we go over to another thing that I mentioned before, where when it comes to the specifics, how he's trying to lecture someone like, a, someone like Sasuke about how revenge is not good for him and how it only leads to sorrow and pain. But like I said before, good friends is not enough to get someone like Sasuke through the day. Kakashi is someone who, as the story progresses forward, seemingly continues to only push group mentality, only push friendship, which is a very, very flawed way of seeing things, obviously. And how you have someone like Sasuke, whose overall goal is something greater than friendship, Kakashi, despite all of his experience, seemingly cannot take this into account. He couldn't take into account the fact that Sasuke was feeling inadequate when it came to his own self-worth, considering the fact that Itachi, when he hopped in the village initially, wasn't even looking for him, but looking for Naruto. The fact that Sasuke had spent so much time training to kill his brother, trying to amass power, and the fact that he failed miserably. Kakashi could not take the individual aspects of Sasuke's psyche into account. He was just focused on friendship. He was just focused on camaraderie. And because of that, Sasuke was easily swayed. Another reason why he was so easily swayed by the Sound 4 when they came and showed his place when it came from a power standpoint. Then we go over to another section of his tutelage which is what he's actually taught the characters from a scale standpoint. You know what the funny thing here is? I hate Sakura, but Sakura is a very, very, very good case when it comes to how poor Kakashi's tutelage is. What was the only thing that Sakura learned from Kakashi? How to walk up a fucking tree. Nice! Nice! Kakashi Sente! Sente! Fucking trees, man! God damn, really! Mmm! The only thing that Sakura learned from Kakashi from a skill standpoint was being able to walk up a tree. In essence, how to control your chakra 
though she was already skilled at doing so. So in essence, it was easy for her to walk up a tree compared to Naruto and Sasuke who had a struggle massively to do so. Furthermore, when you go over to the tuning exams, Kakashi seemingly plays favorites because he teaches Sasuke personally. Give Sakura nothing, no type of training and regiment, nothing in the meantime. And who does he give Naruto? This fool. Freaking Ibisu. Really? Really, Kakashi? We're gonna give Naruto Uzumaki, child wonder of the world, freaking Ibisu. Oh no! And you can see Naruto's mad salty! Like, what the fuck you mean? Are you serious? Come on now. Come on now, dog. And he tells him, well, you know, he's better at me than the basics. He is someone who trains the elite. Though it's been it's it's never been proven in story. Never, not once. This dude is a clown. A bona fide perverted clown. And if not for the fact that Naruto had found Jiraiya, the pervy sage, to teach him, Naruto would have been stunted from a combat and skill standpoint, especially considering the fact that he had a seal placed on him by Orochimaru in the midst of the tuning exams in the middle of the Force of Death, which of course Ibisu would not have known, or Ebisu, whatever the fuck his name is. And then... Again, Kakashi, he trained Sasuke because in his because the way he sees it, because Sasuke is just like me, I'm going to exclude my other students from tutelage. I'm gonna give them other no, no I'm sorry, I'm gonna give Naruto something, someone who's mediocre at best. And then I'm gonna give Sakura nothing. Absolutely don't. Playing favorites, Kakashi. Playing fucking favorites. Because Sasuke is similar to you. I do want to mention something else because I'm pretty sure that folks are going to bring it up in the comment section. But when it comes to the case of Mike Guy and Rock Lee, the main difference here between Mike Guy and Rock Lee and Kakashi and Sasuke is the fact that Rock Lee has, in essence, a disability where he cannot perform Genjutsu nor Ninjutsu. So he needed extra tutelage by Mike Guy on occasion so he could hone his Taijutsu skills to be up to snuff with the other rookies around him, to say the least. However, in Sasuke's case, Sasuke is a bona fide genius. So Kakashi could have literally taught all three of them at the same time while still giving Sasuke his Tridori lessons. In the case of Sakura, could have given her some type of training regimen in the meantime while the tuning exams were going while they were proceeding, making sure that her ninja skills have not dulled because she wasn't partaking in the tuning exams after she fought against Eno and had a draw. And the same thing was for Naruto. Naruto, he, he could have given him, because he knows a thousand fucking jutsu, right? So he could have given Naruto something in the meantime to actually learn off of, and even taught him some basic fundamentals while teaching Sasuke his Chidori shit. He could have done that, but of course, obviously, no, he, so he decided not to. He said, you know what, Sasuke, me and you, in the corner alone, that's how he rolled. And then... When you take a look at this one particular fact, most of the training and most of the tutelage that Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura have had during the start of the series, towards the end of the series, is by the legendary Sanin, not Kakashi. When you consider the fact that when Naruto came back to the village after two and a half years of training with, with Jiraiya, Kakashi was once again reintroduced into the story. And what does Kakashi tell Sakura when he sees her? Sakura, it's been a long time since I've seen you. So not only was Sasuke off with Ochimaru training, not only was Naruto off with Jiraiya training, but... It's been quite a bit of time since Kakashi had even seen Sakura. One of his students 
that lives in Konoha. Apparently he couldn't even stop by like once a week and say, hey, how you doing, what's up? How are things going? And so on and so forth. Apparently he couldn't even do that shit. Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here, man. That's a joke. That's a joke. Again, I hate Sakura, but she is a prominent example as to how poor his tutelage is. Come on now. I mean, you would think that someone who is so versed, so well versed in ninjutsu, Mr. I Know a Thousand Jutsu, couldn't even give some hints to Sakura, who apparently was very skilled at Genjutsu, but that was never truly pushed within the story of Naruto, the fact that she was well versed with Genjutsu. So Kakashi couldn't come in once in a while and say, here, Sakura, I'm gonna teach you I'm gonna teach you a few Genjutsu skills since I do have a Sharingan and I can use Genjutsu and I know over a thousand fucking jutsu. But no 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 couldn't do shit. Couldn't do shit with Sakura. No no apparently not. Apparently he said, you know I'm I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna do whatever I need to do and fuck it. I'm gonna leave Sakura to Tsunade, not gonna even stop and say hello. Nothing. Nothing. And then, like, the last part of his tutelage that we get to see from him is from him and Yamato, where he basically tells Naruto what the Shadow Cone truly is and how he can basically cheat the system to learn the Rasen Shuriken within a few days, like a few weeks, whatever. I mean, then again, he didn't really know specifically that his hints would lead to Naruto's discovery of finding a new method of actually making a Rasengan stronger with three clones instead of two clones but the thing here is again the small instances where he helps Naruto or he helps Sasuke once in a while doesn't compare to the fact that he's completely neglected one of his students aka Sakura and the fact that he still played favorites initially and the fact that most of the tutelage that these that that Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura have is not under the hands of Kakashi, but under the hands of the legendary Sanin. And it's not just the quantity, it's the quality too. They get better quantity and better quality of training from the from their hands, uh, Orochimaru, Jiraiya, and Tsunade, than, than Kakashi himself. That's just the way it is. He's not up to snuff. And his team is fucking everywhere. Where you have Ina Shikacho unit, where you have uh, Shino Kiba, he's not a unit. You have Lee Tenton Niji unit, but Team Seven bam, 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 all over the fucking place. And for the primary sensei, for the initial sensei, not even keeping tabs on his students. Well, mainly again Naruto and Sakura, Sasuke, because he was doing his own shit on some rogue shit. But even still, what the fuck, dog? Not even not gonna send letters to like Jiraiya, like how's Naruto doing? Fill me in on like what's going on. N nothing, as far as we know, not a damn thing. Yeah, nice sensei. <laughs> Kakashi's a really good freaking sensei. Fuck no, dropping the elbow. Yeah, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, sexy boy. Sexy boy. Bam. Fuck out of here. Fuck that shit. Shitty sensei, double middle fingers, yeah, degeneration, bitch, fuck out of here, ah. Finally, the last part, Woo! Mm, the last part of this video, what? After all the stuff I've said, the track record, bad sensei, what else is there, King? What more could you possibly say about Kakashi as a character? And this one kind of isn't really fair, because it's Kishimoto's fault. Well, then again, it's Kishimoto's story, so it's always his fault, but still. This is more so Kishimoto's fault than anything else. But at the same time, it's too bad, because it just happens to be Kakashi, who is the focal point. Of many of these issues. And what are these issues? Plot holes. Oh! Oh, man! Now, keep in mind 
that a lot of these plow holes, a lot of these issues do not exist up until the fourth great ninja war. So in essence, for me, since I actually started reviewing Naruto during the fourth great ninja war, like three years ago, thing here, because my channel is roughly like three years old, thing here is that over the course of the fourth great ninja war, you see an accumulation of plot holes involving Kakashi's character. And they're frustrating. When you have a character who is constantly surrounded by in-story bullshit, it becomes very hard to actually like said character. And for me, the fourth great ninja war was the icing on the cake. The negatives of Kakashi that could be overlooked, like the track record, like how when it comes to his tutelage, not the best in the world, obviously, not even close, where honestly, Asuma, Guy, Kurnai, and she's fucking pregnant, they're better senseis than Kakashi. But, but, it was the plot holes that came up in the midst of the fourth great ninja war that made me say, no, enough of this motherfucker, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with Kakashi. Fuck this dude. This dude gets a giant middle finger. Huge! And I am peacing with this guy. Now let me start with, because there's the, the pre, the pre, there are three predominant plot holes that exist involving Kakashi. Three. Number one, the Mangekyu Sharingan. We find out that when Kakashi kills Rin, he awakened the Mangekyu Sharingan. He had that shit. Because he killed Rin. And his emotions spiked. Now, unlike the events pertaining to Sasuke. Because Sasuke, when his bro killed his parents. And Sasuke saw that shit. It was revealed later on that Sasuke had actually awakened the Shining at that point in time. But the difference between Sasuke and Kakashi in these regards is one word. Experience. You see, Sasuke... Later on in life, awakens the Sharingan in the midst of the fight against Haku, again. And he's able to sustain the awakening this time. However, Kakashi is someone of far more experience than Sasuke. Specifically so with the Sharingan. Why is that? Because he's known as the what? The copy ninja. So you're telling me that someone who is renowned across the land to be the copy ninja to copy over a thousand jutsu and how he's known for using his shotting gun in various ways and counteracting opponents so on and so forth. Apparently this guy who has been using the shotting gun for a fucking damn long time couldn't figure out that he had a Mangeku shotting gun up until Shippuden? Kishino. Kishino. No, Kishi, are you kidding me? That makes no sense. That makes no fucking sense. It's Kishi. How can you have that? You can't have someone spend like 20 fucking years or 15, how many years Kakashi was ever since that moment when he killed Rin up until Shippuden. I don't know how many years it was. It was at least over 10 years. At least. 20. Fuck it. Thing here is this. You can't have a character who is renowned for having a shotting gun who has clearly trained over the course of his shinobi career with said shotting gun not have him even notice or realize that there was a deeper power that existed within a shotting gun not even notice kishi no kishi no kishi no 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 fuck no don't even buy that shit don't even buy it i mean if kishimoto gave us something specific where during the time skip kagashi somehow realized something that he didn't realize like three years ago and said, oh shit, oh, new level, yeah, I got whatever he did, I don't fucking know. Then comes another massive, massive plow that frustrated the living fuck out of me for months. During the course of the fourth, before we go to the fourth, before we go over to the fourth great ninja war, keep in mind, keep in mind, that not a lot of time passes between the events that unfold pertaining to the Pain Invasion arc and then the fourth great ninja war. 
During the Pain Invasion arc, Kakashi could not, could not use his Mangeku Sharingan for an extended period of time. He couldn't just spam this shit. He could not just spam it. He had a limited amount of chakra he could utilize. Very specific. For example, during the Pain Invasion arc, Kakashi, he uses a lightning dog. And then, he uses a lightning clone. And when Choji's father hops in there, along with Choji himself and other shinobi, Kakashi specifically states that when he used his lightning dog and his lightning clone, almost half, almost half of his chakra was gone. After using those two skills. I mean, he did use a Chidori beforehand. Okay, fine. So those three skills. After three lightning skills, his chakra was almost half of what he had. And then, during the events of the Kage Summit, you had this moment. Kakashi only used his Mangeku Sharingan once. He only used the Kamui once. And he was like that. So now you're gonna tell me. Over the event, over the course of the fourth great ninja war, Kishimoto, you son of a bitch. You're gonna tell me that Kakashi can continue to fight for a period of days. Let's get more specific here. Kakashi fights against Zabuza. And then goes on a quote-unquote rampage. A quote-unquote, uh, the Cuffy Ninja is gonna go on a rampage that we don't see. Oh, <laughs> splendid, Kishimoto. How fucking brilliant are you? Against the Seven Mist Swordsmen. Until the day after. Keep in mind that during that night, you had Zetsu clones that were impersonating their fellow Shinobi running around doing crazy shit. And Kakashi and company were on guard the entire night. They were on guard the entire night having to deal with Zetsu clones trying to assassinate them in the midst of the night. And then they continued to fight against the seven Mish Swordsmen the morning after. Up until the following day. And then he appears out of nowhere along with Maito Gai. To help Naruto face off against the Tail Beast, the Ghetto Mazo, and at the time, Toby. Which, he does so, all the while spamming a whole host of Lightning Jutsus and Kamui. Which he already did beforehand when he's fighting against the Seven Deadly Swordsmen. The Seven Mist Swordsmen. And after it is revealed that Toby is Obito, Kakashi continues. The person who could only use three lightning style jutsus during the pain invasion arc and was near half, was at halfway point of his overall chakra consumption, his chakra pool, is able to continue to fight and continue to use Kamui. He was able to teleport Naruto's entire body. So Naruto could do that Rasengan to the face. Who are you? Who are you? Yeah. And he's still able to fight even after that. No. No. Kishi, no. Kishi, are, 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 you, are you, like, how far gone are you, man? It, it, it was phenomenal. The amount of bullshit that occurred within, like, give or take, like, I don't know how many months it was, but it was just ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It made no fucking sense. And then finally, finally, 
he's able to get some chakra from the nine tail fox when the nine tail fox gives him chakra. But you can't have Kakashi who can barely use like three lightning jutsus and not be tired. Use Kamui once. Use Kamui once in the events of the Kage Summit and be staggering massively and have him run around, use all sorts of lightning attacks against freaking Tailed Beast and the Ghetto Mazo and have him spam Kamui like 15 fucking times against Toby. No, Kishi. No, Kishi. I'm, I'm sorry. That was so frustrating on so many levels. You have no idea. It made no sense within the confounds of the character Kakashi. Zero. Donut. Nada. Nothing. Nothing. And finally, the last plot hole. The most recent plot hole. And if you read the manga, you know what I'm fucking talking about. Kakashi motherfucking Hatake is able after his fucking eye was ripped off by Madara he gets a new brand spanking eye from Naruto and is somehow able to receive the chakra of a dead Obito awakens his Mangeku Sharingan once again, and with a Mangeku Sharingan, is able, just when you think the bullshit didn't stop, with the Mangeku Sharingan, is able to use a perfect Susano, which requires an eternal Mangeku Sharingan. And he's not even in fucking Uchiha. Let me be clear, Kakashi, base mode, no eye powers, gets Chakra from a dead Obito, is able to awaken the Mangeku Sharingan, and with a Mangeku Sharingan, is able to use perfect Susano with flight ability, and can embed his Kamui in the Susano's attacks with a Mangeku Sharingan. Let me be clear. Kakashi motherfucking Hatake gets Chakra from a dead Obito who is somehow able to use the Kamui as a soul transfer ability, goes into Kakashi's body, gives him Mangeku Sharingans, and with a Mangeku Sharingan, is able to create a perfect Susano and embed Kamui skills in his perfect Susano. I'm done. There is nothing more to say. His track record is mediocre, is subpar at best. As a sensei, He's subpar at best. Kishimoto had the chance of making Kakashi into truly a great character. Someone on like the same pedestal as Jiraiya. But he's not. He's so far from. It's not even funny. It's, it's ridiculous, truly. And it's sad. Because initially, I actually really liked Kakashi. And then over the course of time, just how I start to detest Naruto Uzumaki... I start to slowly detest Kakashi. And the plot holes were the thing that 
broke the camel's back. The plot holes really frustrated me. The plot holes really got to me. And I said, no, enough's enough. Fuck this guy. I'm, I'm sick and tired of the bullshit. I just got tired of it, truly. And, I mean, I guess there's nothing more to say other than Kakashi Hatake is an overhyped, super idealistic, bad sensei who has too many plot holes revolving around his character. So, that's it. This is the Kakashi Sucks video. The video that I said I was going to do like over a year ago. Bam, here it is. So, I wanted to really get it done before the series ended in a few days. And I managed to get it done. It's here. We, we in. So, King of Lightning, rate the video. Because I know for a fact that if not already, you have at least dislike the video because this video i'm expecting at least um maybe 300 dislikes around that probably even more but you know what the king of lang says what fuck it the king of lang says fuck it it is what it is that's how i roll man i do me and i laid out the evidence before you now you know why kakashi sucks so once again rate the video comment of course subscribe Peace. Have a nice day. And if you're a manga reader, enjoy the finale of Naruto. Have a nice one.